Hey, it's Azure Friday. I'm Scott. I'm here with Stefan. We're digging into Azure websites. We talked about scale and getting, you know, four, five, ten instances. Right. Are you making these instances and then copying my code over to each one of them? So, yeah, cl clearly we don't do that. That would that would be a uh, very strange problem and probably a bit unexpected for uh, for some of our developers. But it is a very it's a very common question and a common problem, which is as always, the second you have a web app that runs two or more instances of itself, mm -hmm. how do you deal with any kind of state? So to your question, what we're really talking about is we're talking about your website content, the actual files that are sitting on a file system clearly somewhere, mm -hmm. um, and that you're potentially reading and maybe also writing to in order to run your app. Right. So behind the scenes, again, coming back to uh, the fact that we follow a lot of standard patterns from uh, old school IIS hosting, all of the website content that you as customers and developers upload into the system, they're all basically running on, think of it as a big set of UNC shares in the sky. And granted, that's a sort of wonky metaphor. So a big metaphor. network, it's, what is it, a net, big NAS. Yes, it, it's like a big ass NAS device with a bunch of UNC shares hanging off of it. Now, the nice thing is as developers, you don't, Unless you really want to drill into that, you typically don't have to worry about that, either when you're writing your app or even at runtime. Um, because what happens is we go out and whether you FTP or Git or web deploy your content to us, we go out and set up the necessary directory structures on the UNC shares. You have your own you know, folder path and directory structures that are unique to you, your subscription, your websites. Mm -hmm. And at runtime, when we spin up your app, whether it's on one VM or multiple VMs, we automatically know that, oh, Scott's website is actually sitting on this UNC share, so make sure these four servers know about that UNC share over there, and they're all pointed at it. That's interesting, because I, I, that sounds complicated in the sense of if I were at my house with a bunch of machines, and we're trying to configure IIS, to use code that's all from the same place? Like, I don't think I could do that myself. Yes, and that's, that's again, that's one of these things where, from a design standpoint, this is our, our sort of the, the ancestor of, of what's running here in Azure Websites. Part of it was a feature called Shared Application Host Config, which I know is quite a mouthful, but basically, how you set up shared web hosting for IIS. Mm. And again, if you were a hoster. If you were a hoster and if you knew all the docs to read and you knew how to futz with all the switches. But again, for most developers, it's like, come on, I just I want to run my app. If I want to run it in three places or one place, just make it easy for me. And so that's again, that's one of the things right. we're doing for you in the background. We're managing all of that. Yeah, it's it's so abstracted away that it's it's kind of easy to forget that there is a C drive and a D drive and you know there's a www root somewhere. Yes. Uh, oftentimes people will email me and say that they want to upload images or they have a text file that yep. they're writing to. And it, you know, everyone has a different kind of application, but someone told me that they were writing to this text file in app underscore data, which was like their database. Okay. But there it was a text file. Okay. And then when they had four instances, right. they had all these problems. Yes. So I'm going to I'm going to guess they're probably using some ASP.NET Razor MVC derivative, which right those are the old app underscore directories. One of them, of course, app underscore data. Mm -hmm. So the important thing there is that's uh, that's a subfolder, a subdirectory within your dub dub root. Right. And to the earlier point that I was alluding to, everything in your dub dub root, it's running on a UNC share that's out there, and all of the servers you're running on are pointed at that exact same share. So my guess is probably um, what your developer was running into is they've got code running simultaneously on three or four machines and they're all trying to do file I.O. that ultimately is pointed at the exact same text file mm. that's sitting out there on the UNC share. And so of course we all know what happens. You get more load on the system and oops, they're stepping on each other and you get weird file locking errors and the app starts blowing up at, at random points in time. But if I were making uh, you know, new GUID, new unique identifier dot text, I could still be writing to that yep. file, but am I hiding a problem that's going to be a larger issue when my app there, becomes popular? Well, certainly certainly you can go out, right, there are all the old school file tricks where if you know ahead of time that, oh, what, what happens if I have multiple apps running? But, you know, let's back up a bit. Let's say you're running on only one machine. 
Well, you can be running on one VM, and again, all of these app frameworks we're talking about, they're all either multi-threaded or multi-process. So they can all have multiple concurrent requests going on at the same time. So really, this is more uh, an architectural problem, which is, hey, if you know you're going to have multiple clients running simultaneously through the same code path, and that code path is partying on the same specific text file or other file, you better make sure you've done something locking-wise. Mm -hmm. Now, you brought up a, an interesting hacky workaround, which is, well, eh, you know, let's just use different file names. That'll actually work. It's just beware if you're a popular site and you've been running for a few months, you might open up that directory and be like, oh, my God, what happened? And you've got like 50,000 GUID.txt files. Mm -hmm. Good luck piecing those together. Now, and, and I'm also kind of mixing uh, where I've got my code, where I'm deploying new code all the time. Is there a chance that at some point that's going to get blown away and I would lose my app data folder? No. So that's, I mean, this is a very important point, which is anything that's in your, your dub dub root or beneath it, that's website content. That's your code, your content. Again, however you're using it, we totally recognize that's your stuff. Mm -hmm. And as long as you've got an active subscription with us, we're not going to go out and touch that or change it. And okay. so again, it's, it doesn't matter of you know what virtual machine or machines you're running on, you're coming up, you're going down. It's always the same UNC share. It's always going to be there tomorrow when you wake up in the morning. Yeah, probably not a good idea to upload videos and stuff into the app data folder. I know that this is my Hansel Minutes uh, yep. uh, system. You'll notice that I've got half of my storage already used up because I yes. was putting images into a folder. Uh, later on, I got the idea to put those actually in the storage in uh, CDN. Yep, yep. So, I, I I could see someone making their own YouTube. That's you. you actually, I mean, again, you bring up a good point, which is today. Um, I believe it's free tier. You get a gig of space, and then I think it's for both shared and standard. You get a, a ten gigabyte. Um, a, amount of, of file storage out on our UNC shares. But you bring up a good point, which is that storage that we're providing, specifically, that's really meant, again, for like, that's your website directory. Mm -hmm. And even if you were running in a more traditional on-premise scenario, you typically don't put like a gigantic image store or video store or a content store, and, like cram it into the exact same directory structure as your website. Right. So the same design concept applies. And what you did here is, it, that's, a, that's a perfect example of right, the quote unquote right way to do things. Take that huge glop of storage mm -hmm. and go stick it off in, you know, blob storage or stick it on a CDN. That's a much better place for it. Separation of concerns. Yes. And this www root, I can go over and FTP, I understand, and I, I've got this already in the clipboard, so I'll bring up FileZilla and uh, connect to my site here. I can see that www root here. Now, this is kind of a lie, right, in the sense of some of these files are on UNC and some aren't, or? These ultimately, when you connect through on the, uh, you know, through an FTP browser or something like that, you literally that that backslash you see up at the top, mm -hmm. you are pointed at the slice of storage that we've allocated for you so and for your website. That's my 10 gigs. That's your 10 gigs. Starts right there and it's everything beneath it. Okay. And granted, when I talk about stuff for simplicity, I usually refer to the dub dub root just because otherwise there are a lot of other directory structures here that, frankly, they start getting confusing if you want to go into the details of, oh, if I'm using Git, where are all the different versions kept, things like that. But yes, ultimately, what you can see in, in an FTP client, that's all sitting out there in a UNC share. It's always persisted. It's not going away on you. Excellent. And of course, good reminder that uh, these are all shared, so not necessarily somewhere that you want to be writing to, even though you technically could. Correct. It's Azure Friday.